Hey everybody and welcome to Dominion Cards. This is a video series where we take a strategic in-depth look at various cards from the board game Dominion. Today looking at Market. This is a five cost action card from the base game and it says plus one card, plus one action, plus one buy and plus one coin. So this is one of each of the four basic vanilla bonuses that you will see appear on cards quite a lot. Um, so this card everyone should be familiar with market because it's usually used to teach new players just because it nicely demonstrates all of the vanilla bonuses so before we talk about market um, we do really need to talk about this plus one buy um, written here so we haven't seen a card in this video series yet that's got plus buy written on it so um, let's talk generically about plus buy and what it is and what it does for you strategically and then we can go a bit more into market itself and what market's doing for you but we can't assess the card without understanding this first so new players including when i was new to dominion tend to only stick to spending as much money as they can every turn on buying the most expensive card that they can so anytime they hit eight or more they will look to buy a single province and if they get six or seven, they're going to look to buy a gold. Otherwise, they just pick up one of the five or four or three costs or whatever that they can. Now, if you're spending as much money as possible every turn on the most expensive card that you can, this doesn't leave you any money to actually do anything with any extra plus buys you get. So plus buys feel weak to new players, right? They, they sort of understand that you can buy multiple provinces in a turn with it. But how are you getting up to having turns where you get 16 money, right? Like it's it seems too slow when you're a new player. Like you just, you know, you just would rather have gold. You know, they just overbuy gold all the time and then you haven't really got you can't do much of anything except just try and hit eight, and then buy doesn't feel very good. Um, obviously, this is this is not the right way to play Dominion, and this um, leads you to massively undervalue what buy is doing for you. So, buy is just a type of gain. So, anytime you see keyword gain written on cards, that's basically adding a card to your deck from the supply. And every time you buy a card, you basically trigger a gain of it. Now, when you gain multiple cards per turn into your deck, um, it gets a lot better a lot quickly, um, more quickly than adding plus one card. So it sort of scales up over time. I don't really want to say exponential because that means something very specific in math terms but you know you, as your deck gets better when you add multiple cards like it gets suddenly it gets better at gaining more cards and so it just gets a lot better very quickly if you think about a typical game you will usually you know your first like seven or so turns like usually the first half of the game you are just going to be trashing some cards you're going to be buying one every turn you're not necessarily going to have that much money and you just start adding cards very slowly but then all of a sudden like games suddenly tend to blow up and you find that you know another seven turns later and you're able to nearly be triple provincing right you know what's going on there how did your deck get so far so quickly and it's usually it's gains is what you need and like the acceleration of your deck is a lot faster than people who tend to focus um, early on on just adding one expensive card to their deck every turn like they don't realize just how explosively it's going to grow in the way that it does so some cards just gain you other cards directly so we've seen before remodel and bandit you know remodel gains a card without buying it um, bandit gains you golds directly um, buys are a lot more flexible version of a gain so the gains are usually restricted to specific cards or like workshop it only gains cards up to a certain cost but with buys they can do that anyway you know they you can still buy those cards um, but the buy offers you um, the ability to buy the expensive stuff as well that cards like Workshop can't do. So buys are in many ways like a better, more flexible version of a game. 
Now, the availability of plus buy, and I guess this applies to some extent to gains in general, but usually to plus buy, um, if you haven't got any in the kingdom, then that puts a pretty harsh limit on how good your deck can actually practically be. Like, there's no point in ever generating more than eight money per turn if the best thing you can do is only buy a single province, because any other money is just going to go to waste. Um, so sometimes it's not just that there's no buy. You can have kingdoms where you can only get one buy per turn because, for example, there's no villages. And if you play your one action, like your one terminal as council room, then you get exactly one buy, a uh, bonus buy rather, every turn. So you get two buys in total. Um, and this would mean that you wouldn't build above like double province, right? And you're only going to be able to buy and add two cards in your deck. So it's sort of very restrictive on um, how good things can go. And that's an important part of assessing a kingdom and understanding what your deck's going to look like. And there's a saying from someone, and I think it just came from the Dominion Strategy Forum, and I couldn't find the original source of the quote, so it's sort of probably not exact, and I'm afraid I can't source it. But it goes something like this. The aim of Dominion is not to have the most points when the game ends, but to end the game when you have the most points. So in Dominion, when the game ends is entirely controlled by the players. Uh, that is because it ends either when certain piles empty, the expensive victory cards, or when any three piles empty. So gaining automatically empties piles. And that means that gains give you control over when the game ends, right? And if you can gain more cards, you have... Uh, more ability to just suddenly cause the game to end and so that lets you get into a state where you just have the most points at one particular part of the game and then you can just end it right there and then and solidify a win so that's that's a really important aspect to high level dominion play right like you need to stay in control of when the game is able to end and having more games than your opponent can often be the key that allows you to set the terms of when the game will end. So plus buy in particular, um, plus buy isn't guaranteed to actually let you gain a card. It's very dependent on actually having the money to use the buy. So sort of like how if you buy a lot of villages you will find that you have all of these actions that you're not spending and it's just a resource that goes to waste. Um, plus buy is the same, right? If, if you generate buys and then you don't actually buy anything, then that part of that card is just that generated the plus buy for you. It's just not doing anything. And so that's an important thing to consider in terms of timing of when you're going to be adding plus buy into your deck. Now, sometimes you can get quite a lot of buys. Normally, you will try and add buys to your deck at around the time when you need it. So you start to realize, like, soon I will have too much money for the cards that I want to buy. So I want to add a buy into my deck so that as my money goes up, I'm still able to spend it all how I want to. Um, and sometimes you will have games where you just have an absolute flood of buys coming into your deck because cards that you tend to want anyway um, give you plus buy, and so you've just got all of these. Now, there is still uses for having an absolute ton of buys. So where I talked about emptying piles, um, one pile that's very important in particular for three pile endings of the game is the estate pile. Estates are very cheap at two cost each, and in two player games, there's only eight of them, whereas in most other like action card piles, there's ten. So estates can be emptied um, fairly easily sometimes. If you think that to get two provinces, you need 16 money. Well, 16 money is also how much you need to empty the entire state pile. Um, and so while getting eight buys in a turn is not easy, um, if you do get it, you may find that rather than go for double province and keep the game going, you can just add eight points to your deck, empty a pile and secure the win. And of course, there are zero cost cards as well. So coppers and curses, um, they cost nothing. 
in terms of money, so you can just buy a load of them. Uh, why would you want to? Well, even though curses give negative points, if you've got enough of a lead, you might actually be able to empty the curse pile and end the game. Uh, I have seen it. I have done it myself before. It doesn't happen very often unless most of them were gone already. Um, it's, you know, minus 10 points is a lot. Um, and gaining coppers, there are use cases. I put gardens here. That's from the base game. Um, if you buy a lot of coppers very late, you might increase the value of all of your gardens. There do exist other things in Dominion that increase um, the value of adding a load of coppers to your deck, but we can talk about those in a video specifically about those cards. I'm not going to go into detail about them here. Um, sometimes getting money is hard, um, especially if like the only way that you are earning money in a game is by through silvers and golds, um, and the draw is not great. Well, it can actually be quite hard to get a lot of money on your turn. Like, you just can't draw all of those treasures. And sometimes buy is plentiful, but money is hard to come by. And that's that's also going to limit in much the same way that buys can be a limiting factor. Sometimes the money to actually use the buys is more important. So that's just something else that you need to consider um, a special note that we do just have to quickly mention, some cards give you cost reduction that make other cards easier to buy, and plus buys absolutely love it when you combine them with cost reduction, because, you know, rather than buying coppers for zero, if you could buy something actually useful for zero, then uh, you can buy as many as buys that you have, right? And you're going to get a massive improvement, so cost reduction is really great with plus buy. Now let's talk about market specifically. We finally got there. Um, market is a great source of plus buy, right? So it's what we call a cantrip, which is plus one card, plus one action. And what that means is that it's very easy to add it to your deck and it hasn't really negatively impacted your deck in any way by adding it, right? You don't, you don't need to add anything to draw it. Like it's not a stock card. Like if you added a gold, then you might need to add like a laboratory to make sure that you can actually keep drawing your deck with the stock card. And because it's non-terminal, you don't need a village added either. So you just buy it and you get the buy and it doesn't need anything else to go with it. So that's really nice. Um, and because it's a cantrip, you can just play a whole load of them. So if you ever need a lot of plus buys, well, market's got you covered, right? Like when market is available, you're just going to have a whole load of buys if you want them, right? You can get as many buys as you need usually when market's around. And hey, look, it comes with an extra coin as well. Um, you can get sources of buy and even cantrip sources of buy that don't come with an extra coin. And uh, let me tell you, that extra coin is really nice when you want a lot of buys. So if you consider, for example, like buying out all the estates, you know, that one coin that covers half of the cost for each estate that you want to buy and like that's that makes a big difference right like the coin is nice when it's paired with the buy now if you're not using the buy then market is what we call cantrip coin so the plus buy effectively you can ignore that part of the card if you are not using it so it's just plus one card plus one action and plus one coin so this effect cantrip coin that we call it this is something that would you would usually consider to be worth about four um, coins on a card. If you were to buy a card that just did that, um, you would probably pay four for it. That's about a fair cost given what it is and what it does. Um, problem with market is that it costs five and not four. Uh, you pay a premium on market because of that plus one buy that comes with it. Now, we've said it a bunch of times on these videos, but I'll say it again. Five is a very competitive price point. There's a lot of good stuff, usually, that costs five. Um, it's very, very different cost to four, even though there's only one coin different in it. And something that you would expect to get for four actually costing five instead is actually quite of a big deal. So this means that as a cantrip coin, and if you want to use market just for the money rather than the buys, uh, it's actually overpriced. It's not very efficient at all. And while it's nice because it's not a stop card, right, and that's nice and reliable, um, it takes a long time to add a bunch of money to your deck via market just because it's so expensive, right? It's, it's hard to get them because it's a five cost card. So market 
is not really a very good source of money. So just overall, this means that it's a fairly average card, probably slightly on the weaker side, but, you know, it's it's OK. Um, because it fits so easily into the decks that you have, because it's cantrip, um, you usually find that you might buy it, right? Buy generally is quite useful a lot of the time, so it's not hard to throw at least one or two markets into your deck, but you're not necessarily going to be going for the entire market pile every game just because... You know, it's only going to be doing so much for you, and there's usually something better you can be doing at that cost. Um, but, you know, when market is available, you usually don't have to worry about um, how much you can buy with the money that you have, because market is just there as a really nice sort of source of buy. As you start building the economy in your deck, you just buy markets as and when you need them. It's really easy to add buy into your deck with market. And, you know, it's a really nice source of that. So um, that means market is good whenever lots of plus buy is good. So if there are a lot of cheap cards that you want a lot of. So in the base game, I'd probably say Merchant fits that bill. But as you add expansions, you can get two cost cards like Border Guard. Right. And it's real nice to get a whole bunch of markets for cards like that, because you can gain them very, very quickly indeed. Right. With market, you get a whole load of them. And similarly, like cost reduction is generally really nice when you have a lot of buys. So it's really nice with market as well. Um, so I would say the take home point for market is that the real reason why you want it is because of that plus buy. Right. Like, sure, sometimes you will get a whole bunch of them because you really, really care that it's money that is not in stop card form. But generally, like if you wanted to add money to your deck, you may find that you're better off. Even just, for example, going for a gold and then buying some extra draw to support that, like a laboratory plus a gold um, is a little bit more expensive. It's 11 coins instead of 10 for two cards. But instead of adding two money to your deck, it adds three, right? So it's actually slightly more efficient in terms of buys and even money expenditure to add money to your deck than like market is. So... Yeah, so that's market. Um, if you want buys, then you want market, basically. So what we're going to do is we are going to, as always, go over to the client and load some games that have market forced in. And we will see um, what we're going to do in these, how useful market is. So this has chapel to trash down very quickly. Um, workshop's a bit sad. It only games you villages here. Um, there is a witch. We do want some. Um, so once we've trashed down, we're going to open chapel and a silver. I don't think we care about the workshop in the village. There's not really that many things that we want to play with village. Um, laboratory is really useful. And to be honest, market will be OK, because what, you, what you're going to want to do here really is you're going to want to... I think you still want to play a witch every turn anyway, just to force your opponent to um, keep having to play the chapel and invest in the village. But you're really looking to buy as many labs as you can and then like as many golds as you can get. Um, and then you will add some markets to that because the draw is not great here. Um, you can go village witch uh, and it's quite easy to... It's You can manage to do that like once the labs are run out if you have markets in the buys. But really, you know, you're going to be looking with market just to get some golds. Um, cantrip coin, like I say, it's fine when the draw is not spectacular, but uh, how long do you really want to spend going for cantrip coin? That's going to it's going to depend, I guess, a lot on how quickly this game goes. If you consider the curses might well run, um, the labs will probably run. Um, if you get a lot of markets, you might be able to stay pile out, but someone buying golds is just going to get a load of provinces quicker. So market's okay here. You're going to get some but I don't think you're going to get a huge amount. Or maybe you will. Um, I think it's just too slow. You'll hit a point where it starts getting too slow to add them in. The laboratories are a lot better, and then you can support golds, which you would rather have instead. Uh, what about this one? Well, the first thing I notice is artisan. Um, artisan makes it very easy to get a lot of markets and also labs, so you're really going to want to do that. So you're going to open Money Lender and silver you, the money lenders the only trashing you want to get rid of all of those coppers 
Um, and then you are going to be probably using Vassal for most of your money, to be honest, in this board. Um, I think you can get quite a lot of action card density, so Vassal is fine. Um, you can throw in labs and markets, and that gives you your village effect, um, so you don't mind uh, missing the old Vassal here and there. It's not the end of the world. Um, again, market is going to be decent here because I think you can get quite a lot of money with Vassal and because it's a cheap card and you can buy a bunch of them like you're going to need some markets and market is actually very low in cost because Artisan while it would rather gain the laboratories first it is going to pick up some markets and it could be that as you play with Artisan like the market pile gets low um, I, I think there's only so much value in buy like you're probably only going to aim for double province and how many vassals are you going to want? You're going to be spending buys on like throw rooms. So you might get like two or three markets, really. Um, and you may get more with Artisan if you can use it. But at a certain point, using Artisan to get throne rooms, vassals or duchies is going to be better than market, right? So market might... It probably shouldn't run. Like The pile probably shouldn't empty on this board. But maybe it could, right? But so market... It's useful, it's the only source of plus buy, and you definitely need it, um, but it's not it's not central to your deck, but you get more than you probably normally would just because Artisan makes it so cheap to get them. Um, that's what I think about it on that board. So on this board, I notice we have all three sources of plus buy in the base game. Um, we have Chapel, which we're definitely going to do, um, and our main draw is going to be like Festival and... Council Room, we're going to want to play some Council Rooms. And we've got Council Room Militia, so we're definitely drawing with Council Room and we're going to Militia our opponent down again. We might probably open here either Poacher Chapel or maybe even Militia Chapel might be better, I think. And we're going to get an Artisan and we're going to start off by using it to just gain Festivals and Council Rooms. Uh, the market is fine. Um, it's prob, but is it any better than gold um, and other festivals and council room? I mean, maybe. I think if you go too much into festival, you might struggle to find your council room. It's quite nice to be able to just like throw in a market um, and draw a little bit more and like find the council room. But I think again, vassal is going to be. Actually, you're not really going to buy gold. You're going to be using Vassal to gain a whole bunch of money, right? You're going to use Artisan to gain a load of festivals, and actions aren't really the problem, especially with Throne Room. Um, you do want the buys and the money to buy a lot of these cards, but Festival kind of gets you that money and that buy. So, I mean, you might just never really bother with Market here. It's sort of... There are other five costs that are sort of doing what it does, but better, um, so, I can, again, I can see you gaining some, but I don't think market's very good here. So, I can imagine on this board, market never actually gets purchased. Let's see what's next. So, with another chapel board, um, again, we have all three forms of plus buy here. Uh, we've got chapel and sentry. Uh, we've got council room and militia again. Um, we got Witch. Witch is okay. I think because you've got enough actions, you probably get a Witch anyway. Just curse your opponent. Um, or maybe you don't, because Sentry's available and drawing your deck doesn't seem that hard. Now, if you want to go the Sentry route, it may be the case that you actually would like a market, just because this is drawing you so much, you want to inch the Sentry a little bit closer to the end of the deck to trash any curses that come in. So... The market is fine, but again, I think this is going to be really you're looking to buy festivals and council rooms. Um, and you've actually got Bandit for gold, and you can draw them quite easily with the council rooms. Um, and that's going to get you money way faster than market because you don't have the artisan. Uh, this is a sad workshop. Uh, actually, maybe the workshop can get you smithies and you don't bother with the council rooms. But I mean, you've got militia. It's probably OK, but you might find that actually you can look for just get a load of festivals as your key card and pair it with smithies instead that you gain from workshops. So it's a lot quicker. Um, yeah, and you're going to be using 
bandit and festival as your main money source and there's not really anything market's doing for you i think with no artisan to gain them on the cheap market is going to struggle to compete with the other things it's everything market does is already covered by other cards that you would rather have instead so uh, yeah i think market is just not very exciting on this board and i think it's hard to justify getting one um but you know, it's easy to add it even when it's not very good sometimes, uh, but I just think you have higher priorities. So this is another artisan board that really likes market, and it's another chapel board. I think this was all but one of these were chapel boards. So um, there is no village, however, I notice. Um, so what are you doing without a village? Well, we've got sentry vassal and we've got market. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be playing Artisan as our one terminal. We're going to want a whole bunch of sentries and vassals um, because this gets us a lot of money um, fairly reliably. And we're going to have a bunch of markets, not only because they give us our buy, which lets us gain the vassals and the sentries, um, but also market. It's quite nice to have a bunch of them for other things for vassal to hit. Um, you just want a whole bunch of cantrips when you've got vassal because you're not always going to be able to match every vassal with sentry. It's probably a little bit too expensive to do that. And just having the extra, the cantrip with the buy and the coin might be slightly better than a sentry. Um, that's what I think. So maybe poacher is better to some extent, though, than just more markets. Like, are we actually going to empty a supply pile? Possibly not. Maybe the vassals will run. If both players are doing this strategy, the vassals might run. But I'm not sure how much the other piles will. Um, well, no, because you've got artisan to pick them up, isn't it? That's really what you're doing. You're buying the vassals. You can buy some vassals and poachers with the buys you get from market. But artisan is getting you sentries and maybe some markets. Um, market, yep, yeah, the buy is useful here. Um, you're going to have a number of them. Two, three at least, probably, just so you can start getting a load of vassals. Um, but otherwise, you know, poachers also okay when you're actually using your buys instead. Um, and maybe sentry would just rather, f or sorry, artisan would rather just gain sentries over poachers. Maybe it's possible the pile empties and poacher is bad, in which case I'd say market's a little bit better, um, even though it's a little bit more expensive. Um, but yeah, that's sort of what we're doing, and we're going to double province. I think, and we're doing that mostly by playing vassals and markets, or yeah, so market is fine, part of this kingdom. Um, I, I don't want to spend too long on these. Um, I can see having it fall into a case where it's going to be better than poacher, and you might actually run the market pile um, just because you really care about the fact that it's cantrip money, right, more so than the buy. But the buy is definitely very good for getting a lot of components. So it's a key card on this kingdom, basically. It's the only buy, and buy is really good. Um, and the fact that it's cantrip is just perfect for this kingdom, really. If there was a terminal source of buy, you wouldn't really be playing it. You'd just be, because you still want to play Artisan, because it's so good here. Um, right, well, there was five kingdoms. As you can see, market, fairly average, has its uses. Um, gets outclassed sometimes by other sources of buy but generally you know because it's a generic card it fits into your deck very easily you, you tend to want it a lot of the time and even on boards where it doesn't look very good you can still sort of see how a market might end up in your deck anyway so that was market and i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you again for the next one thank you and goodbye